The New York Times worked with mobile oil starting in the 70s to create the advertorial. Then they had mobile running weekly advertorials for decades. All right, I'm actually pretty excited to share this video with you as this is, as I'll discuss, a collaboration among a number of outlets, but it's dealing with how large legacy media outlets often give free advertising to big oil in the form of journalism. So this is a topic around climate change that often goes unaddressed, how the media has essentially helped to scrub the image of these massive corporations, making it seem like or sound like they care at all about people or the environment. So I'm going to play this for you. And this is a collaboration between a bunch of outlets that are a part of the Opt Out app. So that is a free app. I'll link to it below the video. I'll discuss more on that after uh, this clip here. And to be clear, this is not like a, a an advertisement. I'm not being paid to do this. I'm just a part of this collaboration. So I want to share this with you. So part of the collaboration is this blog post as well. Discourse blog is one of the outlets that are posting this. Corporate media must stop making ads for fossil fuel companies. So it's this collaboration is both the blog and the video. So I'm going to play this video for you and discuss one aspect of this uh, piece that I found, found to be pretty surprising. Who is to blame for lack of climate action? Well, there's the oil companies, of course. Many scientists agree there's ample time to better understand climate systems and consider policy options. So there's simply no reason to take drastic action now. PR and ad agencies who came up with stuff like this. Energy, environment. Some say it's either or. I don't, I don't buy it. it. Join us and become an energy voter. The politicians who carry water for the fossil fuel industry. Members of this committee need to start focusing on the issues that are impacting everyday Americans and the consequences of an overly ambitious and unrealistic climate agenda. There's one culprit that's always missing from discussions of climate accountability, the media. Corporate-backed and legacy news media has partnered with the fossil fuel industry for decades. And yet, the media never includes itself in stories of accountability here. The New York Times worked with mobile oil starting in the 70s to create the advertorial. Then they had mobile running weekly advertorials for decades, a practice that Exxon continued after the two companies merged. And the New York Times is not alone. The Washington Post, they helped the American Petroleum Institute frame fossil gas as a climate solution. As recently as 2020, Politico, their energy newsletter is sponsored by Chevron. NPR, they're running propaganda for Exxon in their podcasts right now. This message comes from NPR sponsor ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is committed to reducing emissions from its operated assets in support of a net zero future. These ads contribute to the existential crisis of life on Earth. And they give the public yet another reason to distrust the media. And yet the fossil fuel gravy train rolls on with the complicity of corporate and legacy media. That's why we need independent journalism that isn't cashing checks from Exxon or Chevron. That's why we need Opt Out. The nonprofit Opt Out Media Foundation offers a free app that brings you 150 independent news outlets publishing journalists who get paid by readers and donors, not big oil and gas. At Opt Out, you'll find independent news and analysis about the issues that matter without the corporate bias. Join me and hundreds of other journalists who are working to change the national narrative on essential issues like climate, democracy, human rights, and labor. Opt Out with us. All right, so shortly here, I will get to an aspect of this piece that I found to be surprising. But first here, this is, a, again, a collaboration with members of the Opt Out app, which you can go to optout.news and download the app. Again, it's completely free. There's no hidden fees or anything, completely free. And this is a way to get essentially a, a lot of independent analysis and news all in one place. So it's often hard to you know, know who to trust, know who isn't backed by corporate interests. But that's why you have an app like this. Download the Opt Out app and you have a number of outlets. You can actually look at the list here. If you scroll down, there's some examples like Sludge, who I often quote, American Prospect, I often use their reporting as well, the lever as well. Um, but go down, full list of participants here. So we're talking about uh, local and state coverage, uh, newsletters, podcasts, video, 
sharp analysis, hard hitting investigative journalism. So all various uh, fantastic outlets in all different areas. Check it out. But now let's get to what I found to be surprising, a surprising bit of uh, information that came out of this op-ed. And that is the fact that Mobile Oil essentially invented this idea of having these sorts of advertisements disguised as journalism. So more here from uh, the blog as published in um, Discourse. Mobile invented what is called issue advertising or advocacy advertising in the late 1960s and early 1970s to deal with image problems not dissimilar to those they're facing today. Gas prices were high, profits were even higher, and an oil tanker had just dumped a large amount of oil on the lovely beaches of Santa Barbara, California. Access to trusted outlets such as the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times, which worked with Mobile to publish content that helped the company establish a friendly, responsible reputation, went a long way toward painting Mobile as a corporate good guy. But in 1973, something unusual happened. Mobile's PR department created TV versions of its print advertorials, and two commercial stations, CBS and ABC, declined to run them, explaining that the spots were propaganda and that running them would be unethical and might even violate FCC regulations. Mobile execs saw this as the potential end of a strategy that helped that had helped them win over not only the public, but also journalists and policymakers. The company launched a major offensive, placing op-eds in all the big papers and sending flax onto every TV and radio show to alert the public to the urgent need to protect corporate free speech rights. Mobile helped support the precursor to Citizens United, First National Bank of Boston v. Bilotti, and fought hard for their right to continue using the media as their personal corporate PR machine. And of course, as they say, the rest is history. This essentially now is what corporate media is, especially when it comes to their political analysis. So yes, of course, you have, you know, breaking news stories that are covered objectively, uh, oftentimes just, you know, basic factual reporting of what is going on in Washington. That is, of course, real news. It's important news. But then you have the analysis aspect of these networks. And that is where this corporate perspective creeps in and not just creeps in, but takes over their entire perspective. So these outlets that pretend to be neutral, their neutral position or their or pretend to be objective, their actual neutral position is just what is pro corporate, what is the status quo. And you know that simply by looking at the stations that they run. So a great example of this that I use often now is just look at how these how some of these places like NBC, there is CNBC, the corporate, more corporate version of NBC. Then there is Fox News and Fox Business, the more corporate version of Fox News. Yet, where is the working class version of these networks? Where is the union version of these networks? If they were truly, especially when it comes to, you know, NBC, if they were truly as neutral as they claim to be, then they would have a working class or union version of these networks as they do the corporate version. But they don't because these, of course, are corporate networks. Their interests, of course, reside in capitalism. So they're not going to represent the view of the workers on a network when their whole <laughs> reason for existing is to make money for themselves. But again, it exposes the inherent problem with this kind of model, with these networks, with corporate media generally, which is why you need a place like the opt-out app to easily be able to discover all different kinds of independent media not backed by corporate interests, where you can actually get you know analysis and investigative reporting that gets to the heart of these issues and does not give you a corporate version of them. And just to end on this point, so in this time of emergency, new publishers and organizations are springing up to create better and more trustworthy models for journalism. An expanding group of independent editors, publishers, and journalists has come together to form a network led by Opt Out, a nonprofit charity that has launched a free iOS app, Android version coming soon, and a newsletter providing news, analysis, and opinion from more than 150 financially independent media outlets that aren't cashing checks from Exxon or Chevron. So, as it says here, we are working to change the dominant media narratives on essential issues like climate, democracy, human rights, and labor by distributing uh, this news coverage and analysis that is not influenced by corporations. So, again, check out Opt Out, link below the video, and this is, you know, it's very rare, <laughs> unfortunately, 
to have people in this space, outlets in this space come together and have a unified message on something, which is another part of the reason why I'm so you know, happy to share this, this piece in particular. Here is an actual collaboration here between independent outlets focusing on the need to address this issue of how these big oil companies scrub their image. So I hope we're going to see more of this collaboration. And again, it shows you the benefit of having a space like Opt Out.